Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is from Charles, because today is the 3rd of June 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday's uh, morning session, recorded session, of course, for now, uh, because I've mentioned to you guys that unfortunately for now, for the, for this week and the next week, I will be able, I will have to do these videos recorded um but yeah after that we should get back to normal so um so yeah apologies for any inconvenience for that um but uh yeah as all you guys we're, we're gonna have a look at some charts some interesting setups um but before we jump in uh let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer so the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, just before we jump in, as always, uh, quick mentioning of our GD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our GFD Bank website and specifically our, G our GFD research page, uh, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on gfdbank.com and click on the research uh, tab right there on the top. A uh, quick update on what's happening here globally. So as you can see, the number uh, has risen again. So yep, uh, we are now uh, very close to six six million four hundred thousand uh, in total infections, um, and uh, yep, that continues to grow. Um, and if we look at the daily cases, yep, we can see that that it surged again. So, um, so this is what I kind of talked about um, uh, recently, basically, where I kept saying that in a way, for now, yes, it keeps on moving as sinus cosinus, and uh, but with a with a nice uptrend here. So. Um, well, for now, like I said, hopefully this can reverse. Uh, hopefully this has been the peak, and now we could start moving lower. However, uh, we well, we thought that uh, when we were here somewhere in the end of May as well. So yep, for now we're gonna keep on monitoring the situation. Um, jumping into a few indices now very quickly. So the German DAX quick update here. So the index managed to stay above that psychological 12,000 territory and managed to close the day um, yesterday's day uh, above it. And uh, yep, looking at the um, cash index right now and where it's uh, heading to, it is coming closer to one of our levels here. The the one the main level that I talked about uh, yesterday is the high the highest point of March near the twelve thousand two hundred seventy three, and the index right now and in the cash index is balancing near the twelve thousand one hundred thirty seven zone. So basically. Um, it's gonna, we are going to have a nice another opening gap here to the upside. So basically, uh, another runaway gap here. Um, so yep. Um, for now, guys. For now, uh, keep your eyes on this level, the 12,273. That's the highest point of March. And uh, yep, we're going to keep an eye on it because this is our target. We want to see if if the index manages to get a hold up here. So yesterday, uh, the fact that it closed not only above this uh, 11,800. 45 zone, but also closed above the 12, psychological 12,000 uh, area. Yep, did the trick for more buyers, and uh, yep, we could see this one pushing further north. So keep your eyes on this one. And uh, of course, don't get me wrong, if we do overcome this 12,273 territory, there, are, there is a bunch of, uh, there are a bunch of levels that could play out nicely as well. And uh, let me just quickly grab one of those. And uh, yep, like for example, the low the 31st of January could be a nice potential target here near the 12,973 zone. Um, but uh, slightly below that, we do have this little uh, little area, the lowest point of December near the uh, 12,886, 87 zone, roughly around there, guys. So, uh, but again, that's in the scenario if we get a strong move above the 12,273 for now, uh, we're just aiming that area. Um, the FTSE 100. So here the uh, situation is quite interesting as well. Um, it is quite positive too, but um, uh, what I was talking, 
well, long story short, the the index right now is kind of balancing near the 6,280 zone. So basically, it's above this barrier where it closed yesterday. As you can see, the um, the daily candle yesterday closed uh, just slightly uh, below this area, below the 6,231 zone. And uh, but the cash index is getting uh, is pushing further north, and uh, we'll see a nice uh, move probably. Uh, well, we are actually around the 50% Fibonacci, 50% uh, re re retracement on the Fibonacci. So uh, we are currently balancing here near uh, on the cash index. So all eyes are on this on this area because as as I've mentioned before, this area also coincides with the 100-day EMA, and if that gets broken, then the next target here could be around the 6,460 or even 6,536. So we'll aim for that uh, for the, these two levels first, because of course the much better area uh, to consider is the much better target to consider is the 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci, which almost coincides here right now with the 200 day EMA but let's keep it short and simple for now uh, let's keep an eye on this 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci which also coincides with the 100 day EMA and if we get a nice push above it then yes we will aim for higher levels in terms of the downside we will uh, look at start lo looking at lower levels if we see a drop below this area the 5,962 uh, zone I talked about this one previously and uh, a drop below that would also place the price uh, below the 38.2 percent retracement on the Fibonacci and uh, would also place below the uh, that would also place the index below the 21 day EMA and yep maybe lower levels could be met then so but again for now we're leaning a little bit more to the upside uh, gold so uh, gold failed to move above this barrier so and uh, I talked about this level a lot the uh, 1748 territory as you can see uh, this area becomes quite a decent one to watch because as you can see that we're struggling to uh, stay to stay above it and although we did get a, a few overshoots here uh, in the end of May still the the kind of the, the, the commodity uh, fail to kind of remain above this barrier the 1748 zone so and the same story yesterday we came close to that area and uh, we failed to move above it and drifted back down and now the um, the commodity is resting on the 21 day EMA so uh, the uh, well gold right now is still trading above the short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of April and in a way what we can see here is that it's forming a possible uh, ascent Ending triangle, which means that uh, these, well, according to all the t TA rules, uh, these tend to break to the upside. So, however, until we get that break here, but until we get that break of, of the upper side here of this triangle, we cannot really do, do anything. And to be honest, not only that we need to see a break, we would like to also see a nice daily candle closing above this because, uh, as you can see, we get we had these overshoots here, uh, but we failed to close a daily candle. So keep your eyes on that one, guys. And in terms of the downside, we would uh, aim for uh, lower levels. If we would get a break of this uh, triangle or let's say this upside support line, and uh, we would see a drop below the uh, 1694 zone, roughly around here, marked by the uh, the low of last week, and uh, then yep. We could start considering lower levels. Um, now, Bitcoin. Bitcoin it has surprised a lot of people uh, yesterday. So, um, so basically, when I was looking at Bitcoin yesterday in my trader's tea time, uh, we were still hanging above this 10,000 10, mark, and uh, everything looked quite positive, to be honest, because we not only were hanging above this uh, 10,000 mark, we were also above this downside line that I, uh, I kept mentioning. The, the downside line is taken from the highest point of December uh, 2017, and we managed to violate that line yesterday, uh, not yesterday, but on 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 Monday and uh, yesterday we were still balancing above it and uh, yep the day has ended w with a huge slide uh, bringing the uh, crypto lower here towards this upside support line again and don't get me wrong this upside support line is a very tentative one because we did get violations here um, and um, and uh, basically we 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 had a violation. We it drifted a little, 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 little bit lower, but then pushed higher above it. However, as you can see, yesterday it closed the day <clears throat> bang on this line. 
Now I can adjust this line a little bit here, um, maybe put it a little bit this way. So capture the low of the 13th of March and uh, draw it this way. Now we have a perfect upside support line. So in other words, uh, we need to see a break of this upside line in order to aim for lower levels. As you can see, um, well, for the lower levels, at least some of the lower levels, because what, 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 what we don't want to see is the previous scenario with the previous upside line, uh, where we violated the upside line, but then kind of uh, hang, hang it around, or say hang it below it a little bit, and then pushed uh, above it. Um, now, like I said, keep your eyes on this upside line. If we get a drop below this, if we get a break of this upside line, then yes, uh, we will aim for lower levels, uh, at least up until the 8,455 zone and uh, then we'll take it from there but again for now we're going probably gonna stay a little bit on the neutral side um, AUD USD quick update here so this pair managed to reach um, one of my targets uh, the 0 0.6934 zone I talked about this one previously the high of the 16th of January and uh, yep it did overshoot it this morning however as you can see, the um, the the pair right now is balancing just bang on on this line, and uh, for now, basically, uh, what we're gonna be careful with is that if this area will pr continue to provide resistance we may see something like this where we may see a bit of a correction here to the downside um, and then maybe a push higher again but um, uh, we could draw a an upside support line but um, all of these are going to be a little bit tentative to be honest mm, now we could stick to this one here and basically uh, keep an eye on this potential scenario where we could see maybe a bit of a could decline here towards this upside line and if this upside line provides support then yes a nice rebound could be possible because our still our still the still our main target is the highest point of January um, near the 0 0.703230 zone, roughly around there, guys. Um, and then we'll take it, of course, from there. In terms of the downside, now, <clears throat> previously I talked about the 0 0.65 territory, but as I've mentioned before, that the further it goes to the upside and the further it moves to the right, um, the higher we can put our um, potential kind of breakout uh, breakout zone. So basically now the this level here could become that area, the 0 0.6677, the one that I was talking about previously, uh, which acted as a good area of support then resistance, and then uh, now this area could become that uh, level to watch um, in order to aim for uh, for lower areas. So that's why, guys, for now, be very careful. Um, this morning, by the way, we had the um, the Australian GDP figures, and uh, those came out as expected so basically that kind of gave a boost for the Australian dollar and uh, for now the mm, in a way like I said if uh, nothing else bad comes out from Australia then in a way or in, in terms of the economy because at the moment it seems that the um, the pair this the uh, the currency currencies like Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar are uh, are the ones indicating uh, the sentiment in the market which is currently uh, a, a positive one and um, as you can as you can see also by the equity markets the the those are rising so basically we are in a risk on environment at the moment and uh, the, these pairs like Australian dollar and New Zealand are are in exa indicating exactly that so let's say now uh, we could probably try to uh, monitor the uh, the indices, uh, and if suddenly the indices start sliding, well, we could see this pair correcting back down again. So, but again, for now, like I said, the indices are on the uh, slightly more on the positive side. Um, now. Uh, jumping into US dollar against the Canadian dollar, um, the mm, the pair yep drifted lower, but this is what I talked about yesterday. Basically, that we're going to keep an eye on this level because this is one of our targets, the 1.346465 zone, um, and we almost managed to reach that area. But what I was saying that if this area provides support, decent support, then uh, then we may see a nice rebound here, a push back to the upside. However, uh, for now we would be very careful still because because uh, don't get me wrong, uh, everything is still possible. And uh, today we do have the ADP and non-farm employment figures from the US. So keep your eyes on those. And uh, we'll see how uh, how the job market is performing right now. And uh, before, of course, the main release on, um, on Friday, 
and in the NFP release, of course. Um, also, keep your eyes on the ISM non-manufacturing PMI figures, which, uh, well, uh, are expected to have risen slightly. So maybe this could help uh, the um, the US, US dollar USD CAD to maybe rebound slightly. And if oil corrects slightly lower, because oil is right now, um, let's say, had already a decent move higher, so we'll keep an eye on that one. But if oil certainly starts correcting lower, then yep, US dollar USD CAD could uh, push to the upside again here a little bit. Um, now then, GBP USD. Uh, here we're going to be very careful because this is what I talked about uh, yesterday. And uh, yes, we are aiming for higher higher levels like the 1.2650 zone. Um, but uh, yep, uh, around here we'll stay careful because if this area provides resistance, good resistance, then we may see something like this where we could see a bit of a correction back down and then maybe another push higher. If don't get me wrong, if this barrier breaks straight away, the 1.20 uh, 1.2650 uh, gets violated and we see a daily candle closing above this then yep higher levels could be met and then we will start aiming for further for a further acceleration to the upside where uh, slightly above that we do have this 1.2726 zone which is the low of the 28th of February or in other words the lowest point of February and then we'll take it from there um, in terms of the downside we would start looking at some lower levels if we get a drop uh, below and let me just adjust this very quickly below this little area right here the 1.2363 zone because um, that's the uh, uh, that's the um, the uh, the high here of the 26th of May um, and uh, basically now I mean if we do get a drop below this uh, then yes we uh, we could see a bit of a slide here I mean uh, because this would also place the rate below the 21 day EMA so uh, that's why for now guys keep your eyes on on this one uh, yes we are leading a little bit more to the upside however uh, we'll keep an eye on this and uh, like I said if this if this reaches the 1.2650 zone but gets a hold up here then we may see a bit of a correction here to the to the downside but still we will remain somewhat positive um, EuroCAD quick update here uh, I talked about this pair yes, uh, yesterday and uh, basically this level here provided decent support and near the 1.5054 area and uh, yep um, you can see that now the pair is rebounding and trying to make its way higher however as I mentioned before we're not going to do anything until it's kind of trading inside this pattern inside this um, uh, let's say descending triangle formation uh, we need to see a break below the 1.5054 in order to aim for lower levels uh, and in terms of the upside we would need to see a push above the 1.5386 zone here marked by the high of last week in order to aim for higher levels and finally euro usd so uh, this one pushed higher and of course this arrow didn't uh, this scenario didn't work out because the pair did remain above this barrier above the 1.1147 so however we can probably draw take this uh, this arrow and recycle it and use it here so if the pair continues to rise and uh, it continues to move towards this 1.1237 zone I talked about this one previously uh, this is the high of the uh, 16th of March um, and this is going to be our main target this is going to be my main target for now because if it gets a hold up somewhere here then we may see a bit of a correction here maybe back down towards this 1.1147 zone and if this provides support then yep uh, something like this could be possible where we could then aim for another uprise and in terms of the downside well this would need to drop further down here and uh, maybe back below the 1.1039 zone in order for us to consider uh, some further declines but again for now it is we are leaning a little bit more to the upside however we'll be very careful because don't get me wrong even on a daily chart it looks quite overstretched here already so maybe this per this this level here near the 1.1237 could be a nice one uh, to watch as a good area of resistance after uh, after a test of which the pair could maybe correct a little bit lower so yep keep your eyes on that one so guys i hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening thank you very much for sticking around and i really appreciate your likes and views guys really really thank you very much for that so if you want to catch my video later on my my recorded uh, traders tea time as always around 13 15 gmt but for now i hope you have a wonderful trading day guys stay safe and i'll see you later thank you very much and bye bye